is I want to really feel that no matter how bad anyone talks about things, people are hearing that everything is 25, 35, 45 years away. People are having a very, with cigarettes, people understand what happens. People are having a very hard time understanding how they, what is going to change in their life in the next 5, 10, or 15 years. And it's okay if the answer is, you know, things will be stable. But I mean, again, people don't want bad things happening around the world, but it's what happens to them that the majority of people are most responsive. So I know we can't predict the future, and I know it's an, you know, it's a, everything affects everything, so we don't know. But if, you know, if someone, if you really had to predict how lives are going to change, are we going to be able to go to Whole Foods and have a store full of food? Is there going to be lots of clean water? Is the weather going to be stable enough that I could live there? Is the, you know, the, you know, it's what if for people in Long Island in New York, you know, how in the next five, ten, fifteen years? Will we personally be affected? Our food, our water, our ability to stay healthy. Um, just again, if, if 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 people don't believe that they personally are going to be affected, there's a good chance they're going to say, "Yeah, let's." Uh, someone will figure out some technology. So I'd like to ask again, as hard as we can, to think for people who are listening, how will their life be affected in the next five, ten, fifteen years, as best as you could guess. Well, I can't predict that sort of thing. It's kind of outside of my um, expertise, but you know, I think when this starts hitting us all in our pocketbooks, when the stock market crashes because there's a huge international catastrophe, maybe that's what it's gonna take for us to respond seriously. Um, I was in Florida recently, and I was on both coasts in very nice communities, in Boca Raton on one coast and in Sarasota on the other. And there was so much money down there, and so many boats, and so many beautiful houses, and so many gardeners, and, and I thought to myself, this is just too big to fight against, because these people don't want to give up all those wonderful creature comforts. Heck, I don't want to give up a lot of mine, but um, I have to think that maybe Dar can tell us what the economics of this are, what would really spur big change, um, and how it will ultimately hit our pocketbooks. Yeah, it's a really hard question, because I'm definitely not into making predictions, but one thing we can say for sure, what I can say after a decade of tracking climate stories, studies, uh, and extreme weather events, and looking at the trends, uh, and I'm certainly not far from the only person to have written about this or spoken about it, that the one thing we can count on for sure is everything's happening far, far faster and sooner than even the worst case IPCC projections. That has been consistent across the board, whether we talk about how fast CO2 is, is rising in the atmosphere to the amount of melting in Greenland, Western Antarctica, or e the Eastern Antarctica. I mean, up until a few years ago even, I think five at the most, Eastern Antarctica was expected to even be impervious to, to the climate crisis. And now, in the last year, studies came out and they're literally asking, is it already an irreversible melting? The last place that was supposed to melt at all. Um, we see everything happening so much faster. And, and you know, I, it's great that you mentioned South Florida because I have a chapter on sea level rise. And um, I interviewed Dr. Harold Wanless down there at University of Miami because Florida, that was, you know, in a sense, the microcosm of the U.S. mind job of what's happening on uh, the climate crisis, where where else is there this pretense that everything's going to go on forever when you can go to Miami Beach at certain king tides and there's fish swimming across the roads and people put on their rubber boots and just walk through it like it's not happening. I mean, the, talk about the frog in the boiling water, but I think pocketbooks is, is one thing that's gonna be evident where 
I think last year, the trillion dollar real estate bubble that is coastal, uh, the coastal real estate of South Florida leveled off. It didn't grow. And Bloomberg, not exactly a left-leaning publication, ran a story basically saying that long before the first drop of seawater permanently stays in the first house in a, a high-end neighborhood of South Florida, the real estate bubble will pop kind of like the reverse of a run on the banks. Once everybody gets the memo that this monster is coming and that you can't stop sea, sea level rise from entering your home, and there will be like the opposite of a run on the banks or akin to that where people just, how fast can they sell their houses? And there's already shifting happening where gentrification happening in some of the higher levels of Miami where people with money are moving into these higher areas and pushing out uh, people because that's now, you know, projected to become the higher real estate. So these trend, the cracks and the fissures are there and they're widening every year. At what point does it just break? And, and I think that that's extremely close. And then food price shocks. Like I'm amazed the amount of flooding we had in the Midwest this spring. If we didn't have functional global spanning transportation networks where we can offset for now in this country, the crop loss and keep the prices manageable. Um, when, you know, the Arab Spring started from food price shocks, when enough people across that region of the world couldn't afford enough meals, especially for their children. I mean, it was started by a Tunisian vegetable vendor self-immolating um, in protest of food prices. And that spread across and all the way to Egypt and into Syria. Syria record-breaking drought years on end. Bashar al-Assad wouldn't help farmers. Everybody piled into the cities. Still didn't get help, no subsidies. Look what happened. And look what continues to happen. And so when does that happen here? What happens when we have a country, what is it, half Americans are living paycheck to paycheck? Double food prices in a month, what happens? 